Hey you, did you actually know that I have a Twitch stream? Now, over at Twitch TV slash Maincheck, I often stream when I play games, but also when I do uh, game development. And during one of those game development screams, screams, yeah, uh, a viewer actually asked me if I could make a tutorial on how to make a simple dialogue system for Unity. And of course, uh, my viewer's wish is my command. And therefore, I made a very simple series of tutorials on how to make a dialogue system. Now, in the first of those tutorials, we're going to start out by making a very simple dialogue system that is uh, using scriptable objects to configure the dialogues. Now, uh, the experience of creating those dialogues is not going to be optimal. There's going to be a little bit of fiddle work. But um, in the later videos of this uh, series, we're actually going to learn how to create custom inspectors to make the experience of actually creating this dialogue is a lot more enjoyable. Um, also, if you have like any suggestions, ideas, comments, questions uh, for uh, tutorials that you would like to uh, to see on this channel, make sure to leave a comment or just visit me while I'm streaming on Twitch TV slash Maincheck. And now without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so to speed this up a bit, I've actually prepared a, um, our UI. And now I'm going to explain you what I actually did there. So, UI consists of uh, two main segments. First of all, we have this area here that contains the text of the dialogue, and then we have the four buttons. Now, the text is actually just. So, first of all, we have this this image for our background, which is uh, anchored to the bottom and has a height of 200, and then the position is set to 100 so it's uh, actually moved up a bit so it uh, is blocked to the slower area of the screen um, then we have a panel which is just a little wrapper for our text so we have this little background the text is a text mesh pro text and then we have four buttons each button for uh, each answer now in our scripts i've actually prepared uh, these as well first of all we have a simple class that contains our dialogue segments. Now these segments, as you can see, um, reflect our text and our four options. So we have the dialogue text and then we have four answers. Now in this very simple dialogue systems, we are just hard coding the four answers, but um, you could easily make this more dynamic by using lists or arrays. Um, I might actually do a upcoming tutorial on how to do that. Then we have for each answer that we choose, we have this segment after answer part, which uh, is going to store which dialogue segment is getting called after um, after these uh, these answers. But there's going to be more detail on that uh, a little bit later on the tutorial. Then we have this dialogue window script which is um, just a simple simple script that has references to all our UI elements. Then for testing purposes, we've just added a public reference to our segment. And as you can see, if we go to our UI, we can actually change the content of the segment in here. Then we have a, more, a method that is called update dialog. And the update dialog will actually update our UI elements by writing into the dialog text. For our dialog text and for buttons, we actually need to call component and children because the button is actually a nested component which has a text component as a child. So we call get component and children text, and then we update it with our answer. And now if we run this. This placeholder text should actually be replaced with our text from our dialog UI segment that we set up here. All right. Uh, the next step now is to introduce our scriptable object. So we're going to add a new scriptable object and we're going to call this dialog. The file name will be a new dialog. And we find this in our dialog slash 
dialog menu. Now, this structural object will contain a list of dialog segments. Now we need to actually import system connections generic. And now we should be able to go to our project explorer or to create dialog dialog and then we have our new dialog we can call it test dialog and now in our inspector we can actually provide our dialog segments now let's add like i don't know three segments okay so i set up this very simple three-step dialogue in order to actually know to which of these uh, segments we need to jump after we click a button we need to store that information somehow so a very simple way to do that um, store for integers and we are going to set a default value to negative one and this is a, a, a very simple and uh, not the nicest and optimized way to do it but but it will work right so negative one means if we click our button we will we will pretty much just uh close the dialog so let's let's uh dive into all this work so in this question hi my name is chris what can i do you for can you show me where the saloon is this is our first answer and the saloon is actually the second segment so we it, it's the third segment and since we count from zero we are going to add two in here uh, the same for the barbershop barbershop is segment two so we are going to add this one and so forth now we're going to do this for the other ones as well now here we have uh like answer two wants to know where the saloon is the saloon is our third answer and for the last one we have can you show me where the barbershop is barbershop is our second so we are going to do this one and this should be okay now we're going to have to test this later on as i said it's not very comfortable to actually uh set up these dialogues but it will work and we will actually uh make this much easier in the upcoming tutorial on our custom inspector now for our dialog uh, i mean our dialog window we can now instead of referencing a uh, dialog segment we will actually just store a segment uh, actually we need, this is an int and we call it segment index and we are going to store a public reference for dialog object um let's call this active dialog and this was going to be zero now we can actually in start we can just take this active dialog segments and then active uh, segment index i mean and this should now set our text to the first uh, options that we set here but first of all we need to update this to reference our test dialog so if you now hit play hi my name is chris what can i do you for can you show me where the saloon is i think i'm good thanks can you show me where the barbershop is nothing right these are now our options all right so far so good now what we need to do is to hook up a button click so if we add our method um answer clicked like so we should now be able to hook this up so what we need to do is we go to this option one 
add on click and we drag our canvas down here and then we select dialog window answer clicked and then we say zero for the first one and we go down here and we pretty much repeat the steps we did before Dialog window, answer clicked. Three. Oh, we actually made a little mistake. This should be two. And this is one. Okay. Because uh, we start counting at zero. First of all, we need to get um, the information we stored in here. So we have this list segment after answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four. And to do that, we can get our active dialog dot segments and then we should actually I'm sorry I had a brain fart so we take our active dialog uh, our segment index I'm sorry all right following code is going to be a little bit dirty but it's going to be very simple so we go into our answer index and then we say case zero then in case zero we're going to actually override our segment index and after this we check if segment index is less than zero which means um, that we ran into one of these options, which means we should just close the dialog, right? So to do that, we will just going to be uh, disabling our game object that contains a dialog, and then we are going to override. So it's, it's reset pretty much. Now let's copy this three more times. Forgot something. That's why we record the mistakes as well. Of course, after we click the answer, we actually need to update our UI. So can you show me where the saloon is? The saloon, you are standing right in front of it. Oh, and there we have it. Let's try one more. Can you show me where the barbershop is? The barbershop, sure, right over there. Can you show me where the saloon is? The saloon, you are standing right in front of it. Can you show me where the barbershop is? The barbershop? Sure, right over there. Well, sure it is, obviously. And then it closes. Now, let's uh, create a mono behavior. Let's call it dialog test. Public game object dialog go. And then we are going to go into our update method and then we are just going to um, just listen for mouse button down for the left click all right now in unity i will just add this uh, script to our camera now if I left click, oh, I actually forgot to set the reference. So you need to actually set this reference. And now if I left click, the dialog is actually shown. Can you show me where the saloon is? All right now it's, and now if I actually uh, reopen it, it's back open again. Yeah, there we have it. That wasn't too hard, was it? Now, I admit it's not a super flexible system, but uh, I promise you we will keep working on it in further tutorials. And then I will show you how to make it a little bit more flexible and make it look a little bit more. Uh, yeah, make it look good and also uh, make it a little bit easier to use. Um, 
And thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And also, don't forget to visit me over at my Twitch chat uh, at twitch.tv slash Check. Have a great day. I see you around. Balls, this is so hard to watch. Poor yellow. They fought so valiantly in the beginning, but now they pretty much have given up. Fourteen zero. What a win. Fifteen zero.